I don't have any X-Men shirts, so ting. <laughs> Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech and science from your favorite movies, video games, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Do you dream of being more like Wolverine and the X-Men gang? Well, this week, I'm going to find out if their superpowers are possible, and if it's even a good idea to have them. But first, what did you think? On Twitter, Neha Tiwari says, easy, Magneto. He can not only fly, but he has control of magnetic fields. Read everything. Norm says, spider sense. By the way, it's happening. Kenny Bass quickly replies, that's not an X-Men power, Norm. Your time away from the Ag Comic Vine staff has ruined you. Yeah, Norm, get it straight. Ugh, God, I'm lucky enough to have Caleb Garling, popular tech science writer for the SF Chronicle and Wired in the studio today to help figure this out. Well, Caleb, thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. Now, I have heard that you are a huge Uncanny X-Men fan. <laughs> when did this whole thing start? Uh, I think probably like fifth or sixth grade, I yeah. uh, really got in, maybe even like fourth grade, uh, got into the X-Men, uh, religious comic book collector for about two years, uh, and uh, obviously a lot of trading cards, and there was a show and the video games, and then, of course, you grow up and discover beer and girls and stuff like that, but... But yeah. then, and then you get more into X-Men, right? And then, well, the, yeah, that's, that's how you meet girls. Is, oh, okay, yeah. okay, that's good to know. Out of the entire X-Men legacy, uh, what powers would you say are most likely to mm -hmm. actually manifest in humanity in the real world? Um, so, I mean, in some ways you could say like Colossus, uh, you know, the, the giant uh, Russian, I mean, nobody's coded in metal these days, but, uh, you know, you watch like the World's Strongest Man competition and uh, it looks like that one's getting close. Uh, it's actually, I mean, I would say Wolverine is not too far off. I think being indestructible is one thing, but, an, you know, an, uh, a skeleton made of metal, at mm -hmm. least for like the bones that don't have bone marrow in them. Uh, is not too far out of the question. I think a lot of prosthetics these days, new bones, uh, are made of very strong, high-grade metals. So I mean, that one's at least one. Regeneration, in a way, like I, I, I mean, we can grow new body parts at this point, or we're getting to the point where, yeah. like, an ear on the back of a mouse, for right. example. So maybe down the line at some point. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why with sort of the progress of uh, stem cell development and learning about kind of, you know, regenerative medicine, uh, that wouldn't be the case. I don't think it's going to be the kind of thing where you get shot and like the kind of the hole closes in your shoulder. But uh, yeah, I think, we, I think we could definitely be there. One of the things that I, like I said, I'm, I'm really interested by the idea of, of telepathy, like with mm -hmm. Professor X or, or, you know, having telekinetic powers mm -hmm. like Magneto. Um, it seems like in, in the science fiction world, that's something we keep going back to, especially in terms of, of human evolution. And, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of get to that next stage in human evolution where our, our minds kind of expand to a certain point where we, we get those abilities. It, do, you, do you see anything like that as being a potential way that humanity goes in the future? I think the first step at this point, like at least for science, is understanding exactly how this brain works. I mean, I always joke that like neurology is kind of like doing marine biology from space. Like mm -hmm. we still have so little knowledge about how the brain works. Um, in terms of actually like, uh, you know, communicating telepathically, I, you know, maybe. Uh, it, would be, it would be maybe with a device, you know, in tow. Uh, you know, helping you out. Uh, telekinesis, that's another one. I saw, uh, what was it, the Mayo? It's something that came out, or I saw it on Twitter today, mm -hmm. where you know, you know, now you can just put this band on your arm and it feels your muscles and you can move things, kind of like, you know, connect or, you know, we, but now it's just like right in your arm. I almost feel like people who are born with, with genetic mutations that mm -hmm. give them special powers would be harder to integrate in a way, because mm -hmm. um, the, the biomechanical stuff feels more like a trend mm -hmm. and that would be more like a shocking, evolutionary thing. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, in terms of, I mean, if somebody is actually born with those, with a mutation, like let's say they're, you know, gambit and they can, you know, charge a couch and make it explode right there, I mean, that's somebody that's going to probably be a social outcast for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, we, I think as a society, as, as humans, we need a little little run time to get used to things. So if, if we just started having babies that could blow up things when they touch them, I think we yeah, a we'd little have, bit of an issue. Yeah, there'd be a lot of talking. Gambit was always one of my favorites. He, he was one of mine, too. So to reiterate a little bit, if you think any of these, these mutations could be possible, mm -hmm. where would you put your money? It sounds fanciful, but I mean, honestly, like, the, the metal skeletons, I mean, that's, that's where I would start. You'd have some problems with, you know, the long bones generate, uh, you know, red and white blood cells, but, um, I mean, that, that honestly seems the most likely to me. I mean, if you take the other guys like Cyclops, who's got, like, lasers bursting from his eyes, mm. uh, that seems a little harder to do. I don't know where that energy would come from. Uh, you know, human flight, pretty tough. I mean, a lot of these guys could just sort of hover, so there's some physics there that we need to address. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, and the the regeneration on Wolverine's part, I think, would be a little trickier. But the metal skeleton part, I don't think it's actually that far away. I'm gonna stick with telepathy. You're gonna stick with telepathy. I think I think that's my favorite. <laughs> so Caleb, where can people follow your work online? Uh, you can get me at Twitter at Caleb Garling, uh, at Caleb Garling, and uh, that's probably the easiest way to uh, connect. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us yeah, today. Thank it you. was fun. So I'm going to give this topic a fictional. Despite some compelling ideas about telepathy and possibly adamantium skeletons, we're not going to see a magneto-sized calamity worldwide anytime soon. Guys, what do you want to see here on the show? I also want to know who you want to see on the show. Leave me a video response and also let me know how you felt about this episode. And please share on Twitter using the fact or fictional hashtag to be eligible to win some Tech Feed swag. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is Factor Fictional on Tech Feed. Be sure to subscribe to see all of our new shows. Oh, and go check out last week's Threat Wire. Darren is hacking around the world. I'll see you next time. Closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here.